Okay, next page. Ready? Uh, is it recording now? Okay. And uh, this lecture will continue the piezo resistive sensing device. Next page. Suppose we have a micro V, and this is the widest height, length, and this a force F in this direction. Then this is the anchor, this is a V. Then coordinate system X along the length direction, Y in the thickness direction, and Z in the W direction. So if we apply a force, then we are going to have bending of the V. Then we have a equation for the stress, sigma L. L means in this direction, along X direction. So sigma L is a function of X, function of X, and also a function of Z. See, if we bend the bit this way, so on this surface, do we have compression or tension? I got here, on this surface, we have compression or tension. What's it? Compression. Yes. And on the other surface, like, do we have tension or compression? on this surface. Surface in the rack. Here, on this surface, on this surface. Tension. We have tension, yes. So, along X direction, so the compression force is negative. The tension force is tension, is positive. So this is an equation, sigma L is a function of x and a function of z. If x equal to zero, means we are at this point. When x equal to zero, we are at this point. And if z is, if f is positive, this is positive direction. So if x, f is positive, then z is positive. So this is positive direction, so on this surface, this is positive, this is positive. So we put a minus sign here to represent we have a compression stress here. And on the update surface, x equal to zero, f positive. But now z, on the update surface, z is equal to minus w divided by two. So if z is negative, negative, so we have positive value on the other surface. So on the other surface, we have tensile stress. So this is this equation. So we have two parameters, z, represent the z coordinate, and x, represent the x coordinate. Okay, any problem with this? Okay, next page. Then we put piezo resistor polysilicon. So this is the equation for piezo resistor. Rho is the resistivity. So delta rho divided by rho is the same as delta r divided by r. Because rho equal to, because r resistance r equal to rho L divided by a. A is cross sectional area, and all is the length polysilicon, the polyresistor. So delta rho divided by rho is the same as delta r divided by r. And this is the equation pi L sigma L plus pi T sigma T. So L is the direction of the PL resistor, length direction. T is the transverse direction, perpendicular to the length direction and x is the coordinate. Because for our case, 
Bendy, previous fake, please. For this case, we apply force in this way. So the stress in x direction is much larger than the stress in the widest direction. Almost in a width direction, in a along the direction, there's no stress. We only have sigma L. Next page. Because we only have sigma L, there's no sigma T, so we can delete this term. So we are left with this. So because sigma L, previous page, sigma L is proportional to force F. Next page. So if you know force F, you know sigma L. If you can measure the resistance change, if you measure this resistance change, you will you can calculate sigma L. If you know the value of sigma L, you know the value of F. So this is a typical force sensor. Marcel, could you read this? The piezo resistor on the cantilever is sensitive to the local longitudinal and the transfer stresses, and the <coughs> resistance change of any element due to the mechanical stress is depicted by. Okay, thank you. Kumail, could you read this? Your BR rho and delta rho are resistivity without stress and resistivity change caused by stress, respectively. Great stuff. When you write English, it's very important, usually rho, delta rho. If you see the English respectively means rho is the resistivity without stress. And delta rho, resistivity change caused by stress. So A and B are C and B respectively. So when you write English journal paper, this is a very typical sentence you will see again and again. Okay, continue. The subscript X represents the position of the element sigma 1 and sigma, Hello. sigma L and sigma T are the longitudinal and transfer stress while phi so stress is stress is, yeah. While phi L and phi T are the corresponding longitudinal and transverse piezo resistor coefficients respectively. For a thin piezo resistor with a small deflection, sigma T can be neglected, so equation 2 can be reduced to. Okay, thank you. See, forget respectively. A and B. A and B are. So, remember this sentence pattern. Next page. Okay, so the location we put the piezo resistor on the top surface. And uh, they use the technique. This is anchor, but uh, they remove material here. So this way, if why do they remove the some material here? What's their purpose? To increase the stress of the sun. Yes. If you don't remove the material here, they are all solid. Then the strain will be smaller. If you remove the material here, it's much easier to bend. So we have larger strain in on this surface and on this surface. Can you imagine that, Kaider? So this is the area of the piezo resistor. Because this is semiconductor fabrication process. Because it's semiconductor, so we cannot randomly put the poly resistor any place we want. Only on certain layer, we can have the poly layer. Ethan, why we put the poly on this surface? Why 
So we put the poly here. Why we put the poly here? Other than here or or here. Why? Do you know the reason? Because according to the semiconductor fabrication process, we have only we can only deposit poly on certain layer. We cannot choose any layer to deposit poly. Okay. So in this case, suppose this is wafer, then use the deposition to put doping on the top surface of the wafer. Doping, D-O-P, means we use thermal deposition to put the N plus boron or phosphorus P plus on the top surface to create poly resistor. Okay, so this is fixed end. So this is anchor and this one is the B. So the bead here. So this is solid material. The bead here. And this one. Suppose the mass open only goes this area, mass open. So when they do the etching process, they only etch some cavity here. They don't etch this area. Okay? Do you get it? So you are sorry, Ethan. Yeah. Leo, why? Do you know why they only remove the material here? Why don't they remove everything here? Do you know the reason? Here, do you know why? Mass open only here, not all over the wafer. Why? Because they will, the other wisdom will always be added. So it's to remove and less material with the same process. Mains open. If you put mains open everywhere, during the etching process, the first step etching, we remove oxide. The second step of etching, we remove the silicon under the bead. So if you, if the mains open is very large, so during first step, remove oxide. But the second step is going to go down to the silicon and go under cut. So this is anchor. Suppose the anchor should be fixed. If you have large mass open area during the silicon aging, not only they remove the silicon here, they will remove the silicon under the fixed end. So this fixed end will become floating, not fixed. Do you get it? Okay. And this is the dimension, so W and this one, WE, and this is LOE, 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 W area are uh, removed. Okay, next question. <coughs> because we have the, usually we use I as a symbol, but in this paper they use Say 
This is the second moment of area. In order to calculate stress, we need to calculate the second moment of area because stress equal to n y divided by i. i is, okay, z here. So if you know the moment n, you know the location of, of your piezo resistor. You need to calculate the i value of the cross-sectional area. Okay, previous page. If this, if we don't remove this w, then the total cross-sectional area we have with this w, we have i h, and you apply bending moment here, so the i value is. 112 times, so this is W this is H times H divided by W cubic. If we don't remove the any anything here, but now we remove some area here. So next page. Now the I value it becomes H divided by 12. W cubic minus W E cubic because we remove this section. And uh, when for X from 0 to L of E, for X from L of E to L of, is also, a, it's still a solid previous. For X, this is X coordinate. For X from 0 to L of E, this area is removed, so we use the first equation. But from x from L of e to L, it's also solid. It's all solid, so we use the second equation. Next page. Yes. For x from L of e to L, we use this equation. Do you understand? Why do we use this equation for x from L to L e? Because uh, we have hollow portion there. Okay. Next page. Okay. Then. Okay. Could you read this? Uh, w, W, E, and H are the. Get the short. As. Figure by the electrical density of the candle K L is given by. Okay, the lateral stiffness means the ratio between force F and the displacement at the tip previous. We apply the force here, and you can measure the displacement at this point. So the force divided by the displacement at this point is the stiffness next. This is the stiffness equation. Frank is smiling. Are you smiling? Okay. Okay, this is the, the English word lateral. Okay, previous. For B, this one, this direction means longitudinal. And uh, the direction perpendicular to the longitudinal direction is lateral direction, lateral. So lateral could be this way or could be this way. B, the solver is proportional to the longitudinal direction. Do you get it? Okay, next page. Next. Then we put everything inside. We because delta r divided by r equal to pi l, sigma l. So sigma l uh, previous. 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 Sigma l c sigma sigma l here. But sigma L equal to moment times, okay, next. Um, 
previous. This is I daily. So sigma L equal to moment L times the location of the pseudo visitor divided by I previous. Previous. See? Here and here. So we, when z equal to w over 2, this is w, this is w over 2. So when z equal to w over 2, remember it's an m equal to f times l, the moment, the torque moment, f times l is the moment. So f times y divided by i. And y is, so z, in this case, it is z. When z equal to w over 2, f l is the moment. And z value is w over 2. And i value, next. i value is this one. h over 12, w cubic minus w e cubic. Next page. So you can. Why we have L e divided by 2? W plus W e divided by 12. Let's do the derivation. So we move 12 to the denominator, h, w cubic minus w e cubic divided by, we move the 12 to the denominator, 12 here, and this is f, and it's, uh, okay, I got it. We need to calculate the moment. So, for this speed, we apply the force. I can't play the speed. Okay. It's okay. So, we need to calculate the moment along the length direction. So, in order to do that, this is F, and we have reaction force. We, first, we do free body diagram. So F, reaction force F. And uh, if this is a reference point, we have a moment this way. So we must have a reaction moment this way to balance this external moment. Because for B to be in equilibrium, total force should be zero. Total moment should be zero. So F, F, total force is zero. And total moment, we have one moment. F times L, one moment going this way. So we need to have a moment going this way to balance this external moment. So this is F. Because now we have the piezo resistor. The length of piezo resistor is previous. Mm -hmm. Previous. The length of the piezo resistor is also length. This is L E. So next page. Next page.
So we need to calculate the average average strain along this suppose this is L E. The length of the piece of vista is L E. Okay, so we need to do the sigma average equal to integration sigma dx divided by L E. Because L E is the total length of the field of resistance. So the average trace equal to if we have a tiny segment dx. In this tiny segment we have sigma. Then sigma times dx integration x from zero to L E. This is the in each segment we have trace. And divided by the total length, we can get average stress. Leo, do you understand this one? What? Confused. So, in this law, if he has a value 4, he has a value 3, he has a value 2, he has a value 1. And that is the zero coordinate. And this is the length direction. So in order to get the average value, but uh, can you sit over there? The first segment, the length is 1. The second segment, the length is also 1. For the third segment, the length is 1, 2, 3. The fourth segment is, has a length 1. Because each one occupies different segments. So you cannot just say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 divided by 4. You cannot do that. You need to do 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 times 3 plus 4 times 1 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The same. For each segment, you have two segments. So this is the segment length. When you do this integration, you need to divide it by the total length. You need to get the average value. So are you clear? Okay. So do the integration. The sigma equal to n. So n, we need to take the tiny section. So if this is, this is x, so we do. So in this tiny section, we need to get the moment f x. So in this tiny section. Zero to x. When, when in the along the length direction, at the location x, we have moment f x. And at this location, we need to follow force equilibrium and the moment equilibrium. So if we have force f here, then we have force f here. And this is moment m. This is f f l. So this m x equal to F x equal F L minus F x because this is x we have a force F F so we take you need this point as a reverse point so we have F x in this way so we have F L this way we also have F times x moment this way so F x should be equal to F L minus fx and uh, so Leo, do you understand? So f and equal to f and minus fx. So sigma equal to f 
x times w times plus w e divided by 4. Can you read this? W e W, so he used W plus W E divided by, so this is W over 2. This is W E divided by 2. So if we take the center point, center along this point resistor, it is W over 2. minus W E divided by two. So it is so it is location. So am I right? So this point is W over 2 at this point. W over 2 is this point. But we want to take a center point. So we need to, this one plus is divided by 2. So in W plus WE divided by 4 is the In this point, coordinate of this point, we take the center point. Next page. Next. So, W plus W E divided by 4. And Y divided by I dx x from 0 to L of E divided by L of E. And N x equal to this one. Okay, can you do the integration? I ask you to continue this integration on the paper. <coughs> to prove the result is the same as the paper. What time is it now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, can you stop the Are you ready? Video? So camera up. Okay. So I have asked the TH to derive the solution. So based on this integration, we just follow the steps. Eventually you will get here. Okay, can you go to the PPT? Next page. Yeah. The same without? Yes. Okay. Next page, please. Oh, sorry. Keep here. So I'll ask. Ahan, could you read this? In the final case, I think that the value of IL is 29 times 10, oh, uh, 10 to 10. 
and then um, the related change for the resistance is distance to reach 0.6 meter with the supplier pole is 10 micron meter. Okay, so if we assume pi L is 59 times 10 to 11 pi L and F, we use the value 10 micronewton. And uh, in the paper, they have the dimension for L E, L W, W E, H. So we put all the numbers in, you can calculate the percentage change, 0.6%. I told you, usually for two design delta R divided by R, the value should be nearly 1% in order to have for this piezo, this sensor to work. So in this case, they design their data are divided by R, zero six percent. So this is design criteria. Leo, any problem? So if you have problem with the integration, you could ask. Okay. Next page. Then, again, crystal bridge. I will ask. Okay. Ah, me. Could you read this? When D1 minus D2 is the output voltage of the bridge, the VCC is the supply voltage. Delta R is the change of the sensing piezo resistor, and the R is the resistance of the reference resistor, and it is also the zero stress resistance of the sensing piezo resistor. Combining in equation seven and eight, when VCC equal by B, the sensitivity can be zero point seventy five. And the micro you have in the previous case. Okay, so in this crystal bridge, originally R A, R B, R C, R D, they are all a value R. R. And this this is mains mains register. It, the value is R plus delta R. So R A is R plus delta R. R, B, R, C, R, D, R. And B1, this is B1, and this is B2. A ground here, BCC here. So you can derive this one. Get an A4 paper, please, then derive this one by yourself. So here, could I keep this one? Thank you. So we got this equation, equation A. So previous previous equation seven. Now we have delta R divided by R. And we have F here. So in order to know the sensitivity, sensitivity has, you can define the sensitivity. Sensitivity could be delta R divided by R, divided by F. So percentage change in resistance divided by total force is the sensitivity because you are going to see next page. Next, see the definition of sensitivity. You can define delta R divided by R divided by force or you can change delta R divided by R to four V1 minus V2 divided by VCC. Okay, previous previous. So delta R divided by R equal to four times V1 minus V2 divided by VCC. 
So we can B1 minus B2 divided by B divided by say A. B1 minus B2 divided by A. Then you can move BCC here, BCC, and move 4 here, 4. So B1 minus B2 divided by A is the definition of sensitivity of this device. Next, next, see. This one, mini volt is V1 minus V2. This is micronewton minus force. So it's mini newton per micro force newton. So now, use BCC equal to Y volt. Use equation seven and eight and the uh, previous. So equation seven, we have, so this is, this is 10 micronewton, and this is 0.6%. So you can use this result, 0.6% and 10 micronewton, you can calculate Three pi and all, W plus W divided by H, W cubic minus W E cubic and all minus and all E divided by two. You can use these two values to get the value of, of this one. And you can use this relation, this relation, next page. And this relation to calculate this final value. Okay, do it, please. The signal from the bridge is conditional to the CMOS integrator circuit shown in the figure, whose main functions are signal amplification and wide suppression control. Major circuitry is two stage instrument to be fired, including three amplifiers A1, A2, and A3. Three amplifiers A1 and A2 serve as a non enlarging amplifiers to achieve high input experience and differential output in the first stage, and three amplifier A3 is a differential amplifier to turn the dual both signals into one and to do fine adjustment in the second stage. Resistors act as a promotional resistor or feedback resistors. Figure H shows the layout of the circuits. Okay. So in this journal paper, <coughs> they have this uh, instrumentation amplifier. So the circuit is, the detail of the circuit in reference 17 to 19. Can you go to page, page one of this? Page two, page three. Okay, so can you go to the directory, file directory? Can you go to, can you click with uh, see this one? Yes. Can you scroll down? Oh, sorry, can you close it? Can you go to B-A-K-K-E? Scroll down. Okay, now this one. Yeah, close it. Uh, this one. Uh, can you scroll down? Yes, this one. Okay, so this is the journal paper. Can you go to reference 17 to 19? Can you enlarge? So the circuit comes from reference 17, 18, 19. You see, 17 is a book, and 18 is also a book, and uh, 19 
it's also a book. Okay, can you go back to the PPT? Yes. So the A1, A2, A1, A2, and A3. Then they don't show the detail, they just see, they read the books, and they reference the books, and design these pre amplifiers. So there's no detail. So next page. Because, see, the voltage output and V divided by the micronewton is small. Usually, we prefer. Okay, can you go previous? Previous. See, 0 0.75 and V per micronewton. And uh, we prefer larger output, so we want to amplify this 0 0.75 because usually it, it's better 10 millivolt, say 10 millivolt output, but it's less than one millivolt, too small. So we want to amplify this signal. Next page. So this is two stage, stage one, stage two, two stage OP. We use two stage OP to create the amplifier. Too bad they don't show the circuit detail to us. So next page. Then um, V out here. This is V out, and uh, we have V one, V two. So V one, V two here. So V1, V2, and V out. This two stage OP, this is the equation they got. So let's say R1 is the main resistor, R2, R3, R4 equal to R. So plug this value into this one, you can get this one. Tyler, did you read this? <coughs> In equation 10, A is the adjustment factor. The amplification factor of the signal processing circuits may be adjusted by altering the value of F. Yes. Sorry. I, so R1, R2, R3, R4 here are the value here. I think. Okay. R2, R3, R4, and R1. So sorry, they are they have nothing to do with speed of visitors. They are R1, R2, R3, R4 are here. So this is the relation. So A is the parameter they can adjust to get the relation, the amplification ratio of this circuit. Okay, next page. Kumail, could you read this? Simulation of the AC characteristics of the instrument amplifier is performed with the circuit simulator factory. The amplifier consists of a current source, a full circuit amplifier stage, and an output buffer stage. The working voltage PD is set at 5 volts. All resistors are set as 100 kV. Adjustment factor P is equal to 1, and the amplitude of the input signal is 10 mV in this simulation. According to the equation, V out is equal to 2.5 plus V in V in minus 1, V in 2. Amplitude of the output signal should be 60 mV. We are now show the simulation result. Okay, see, we prefer the output is 60 mV. At least 10 mV is the standard. So we need the amplifier. So V1 and V2, differential signal. So that's why it's important to have a differential mode because differential mode, you can have V1 minus V2, previous. 
Yeah, we in one mostly to this is differential mode. So we try to use differential mode to design the sensor. Okay, next page. So for this differential mode input V1, V2, this is output. So output could reach CT and V. So this is the DC value 2.5 and 2.56. 2.56 minus 2.5 is 0 0.06 V. So it's around 60 and V. So this is output, 60 and V output. Okay, so again, in journal paper, we need to have mathematical equations. Also, we need to run simulation. Very important, not only simulation. Only simulation, very, very low value. Equation plus simulation, you increase your value much, much larger. So don't just do simulation. Always thinking about Mass and equations. Okay, next page. Okay, they run the circuit simulator, get the frequency response. This is phase, this is gain. Okay, next page. What's it? Did you read this? In order to find out the minimum detectable force of the integrated system, the noise of the piezo resistor and the circuits is discussed. Johnson noise, which is dependent on the temperature, and clicker noise, which is relevant with the frequency, are the dominant noises in the piezo resistor. Uh, at L concludes the equivalent noise voltage in a band. Uh, this wire uh, KB. Okay, thank you. For piezo resistor, we have say two noise. One is thermal noise. Thermal noise, Johnson noise. This one. And uh, frequent noise. Frequent noise related to amplifier, the circuit. So we have frequent noise. We have Johnson noise. So Johnson noise related to the thermal, so it's R here, temperature here. So for piezo resistor, you can use this equation to estimate your noise. In terms of voltage. So this is your the range of your operation in the band, your operation band. Okay. Leo, you read this? Where KD is the voice given contact, P is the temperature, R is the resistance, alpha is the dimension independent device and the parameter, which is between 3.2 times 10 to minus 6 and 1.7 times Crystal same. V is the basis voltage across the resistor. Ci is the charge carrier con concentration. Okay, thank you. So alpha is a parameter you can play with. So you can adjust alpha to fit your noise signal. To the, this is the equation. Uh, you have your simulation or your experiment. You can adjust this value alpha to fit your equation to the simulation. Fitting is not precise, but at least if this one can be fitted to your simulation or experiment, you know the relation between all these parameters the relation between all these parameters to the noise. So fitting is not a bad thing. If, if you can fit well, okay? So you know if you increase, 
if you increase the temperature, the relation between noise and the temperature, or if you increase your supply voltage, and what's the relation between supply voltage to the noise? So noise analysis is important too for in the sensor design. Next page. Relation between resistance R K O with the displacement of the cantilever tip. So we have cantilever, we apply force, then we have displacement. Then you have a displacement, you can measure the output. So testing the voltage 2.14, you can get one, two, three, four point. And if you change the voltage to three volt, you can get a result. This one, this one. So this this is feeding curve to feed your to find the, the straight line very close to these four points. Okay, you can use MELAB to do that. MELAB can do, if you input MELAB, input these four points. MELAB will find this regression line for you. MELAB has another function to help you to present your data. Next page. Simulation. I think this is experiment or simulation. So this is the voltage output, output voltage. Okay. Next page. So this is another design. So what time is it? Two, three, thirty, four. Okay, so we have another design. In this case, this is the poly, poly resistor. They go this way. In order to increase the R change, it becomes longer. If you just have this in and this out, then sigma ds, ds is just this length and this length. But you have Another length, your sigma ds integration. The length is much longer, so you can increase your sensitivity. And this is 2P4A process. 2P4A, we have two poly, poly resistor, four metal layers. So we just use poly 2 as the piezo resistor layer. And again, this is the crystal bridge for, so this one, R plus delta R, you do this piezo resistor, and R, R, R. They are reference resistors. So this is under sensing beam, and you two have three, the same structure, but uh, they are not under beam, they are under anchor. So they are, will be influenced by the deformation. So you can derive this one. So you have done this in the previous case. Okay, next page. And this is the layout for pseudo resistor. So usually this is the layout, so but you can Use the red square. And this is enough view of this red square. And this one, enough here. So this is the bit you have here, period of resistor. And this one is, uh, we have four period of resistor. And uh, two, Two pillar research goes large, and the other two goes small. So this is their structure. Okay, next page. See, 
This is another design. Then, it's a similar design done by Q because this bead, if you just use this bead to the anchor, then the deprivation is too small. But if you create the cavity here, cavity here, and use this design, you can increase the deformation. Not a lot, but a little bit. Piece of resistor one here, piece of resistor two here. So see, this is piece of resistor R1, piece of resistor R2. And the signal, V, O. So, Kumail, do you read the first point? In plain bendable cantilever particles and same. Okay, thank you. So for mains, we have two major directions. One is, if this is wafer, if the bit move on the surface of the wafer, this is in plane direction. If this bit move out of the wafer surface, this is out of plane direction. So for this device, it is in plane. In plane, so it's in plane, bendable cantilever. Okay, watch it. Could you read the second one? These might form soft pillow resistor R1 and R2 located in the side wall of the lateral part of the level and resistors are serial connected in the three terminal storage lever. Okay, thank you. So this is the sensing part and the boron. So we have boron and the phosphorus. Boron is in the third 3A family. The third A family and the phosphorus is the 5A family and silicon is the 4A family. So if you dope boron 3A family to the silicon wafer because 3A means it has three electrons in its outermost circuit. And uh, for, for a silicon, it has four electrons in its outermost. So the boron doping into the silicon means it has at least we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need eight electrons to have a stable circuit anyway. So if the boron has three, silicon has four, we have one hole. And this hole can move around to become a conductor. So because this is hole, so we call this P-type. P-type silicon. Okay, so boron P-type point piano of resistors. And you only doping only on the side walls. Only on the side walls. So this is the side wall, this side wall. We have two R1, R2. We have three node. Node one, node two, and node three. So suppose this is V A. So we have R1 and R2. So if this is ground, kind of, if this is ground, this is VA. This is R1, this is R2. So what's the value of VO? This is voltage divider. Sorry, again. V into multiply by R2 divided R1 plus R2. Can you come here, write, write it down? Can you help? Hugh, can you help me up to write?
This is ground. This is R1. This is R2. This is supply voltage. VO is output voltage. Ah, well, could you? Okay, two minutes. <coughs> Okay, can you explain to Kume what? Okay. So this is the voltage divider. I mean, could you read this? And lambda can enable fan fan causing MD fans can be reducing the fan. Okay, thank you. So this is flexible. Flexible is something like a spring. So if we apply a force, a in plane direction. So muscle. We apply bending in this way. So R1 is in tension or compression. Tension. R2 is compression. Okay, good. See, remember the equation. Delta R divided by R equal to pi L or sigma L. So if sigma L is in tension, this is tension, means sigma L is positive. If R2 is in compression, means sigma L is negative. Delta R divided by R equal to pi L sigma L. If sigma L is neg positive, means delta R is positive. So this, this R increase, this R decrease. So this one means the strain anti-phase. Anti-phase means one up, one down. Anti-phase. The same phase means go up together, go down together. But anti-phase means one goes up, one goes down. So this is differential mode. So this design is good, differential. Frank, do you understand? Next page. Frank, could you read the first point? To bend the ball and the lever with four feet as piezo resistors, which are electrically connected in the four feet. Okay, thank you. See. Go. Well, the beat. See. This is anchor. And uh, this is another anchor. So we have B goes this way, goes this way, goes this way, this way, this way, this way. So we can move this one. And uh, one is, okay. And uh, Aga, could you read the second point? A low offset voltage and high sensitivity of the central distribution between both high dog D plus complex tendons of the low resist have to be a non the one one zero direction of the suction or explain this. Okay, thank you. So one one zero direction, we have a high pi L, pi L value. So we need to say the piezo resistor when we do the verification, they try to allow 
this direction along the one one zero direction. But we cannot do that because U18 means doesn't allow us to select any crystal direction. But this just says one one zero direction, we have the highest value of pi L. So we can increase the sensitivity. Increase the sensitivity. Okay, so next page. Displacement and the output voltage. See, the output voltage should be NV and around 100 is better for the sensor. Okay, so they use a differential mode for sensing, but they didn't tell us their amplifier did not. So it's like kind of secret. Next page. Okay, in this case, they want to do the 3D position sensor. For one set, is 1D position sensor. But we have three, so they want to do X, Y, Z position sensor. Three axes. The direction, the direction. Okay, Hugh, could you read the first point? Two of the lesser sensing in S and Y are provided to the cyber vision distance. Thank you. So you we, we do the doping process. So if we dope, so for candidate will be if you doping at this surface and this surface, and we bend the beam this way. So one is tension, one is compression. So this is implant sensing. And another one, so this is acceleration, another one here. Doping side wall, doping side wall, push y direction sensing. So we have two implant direction, x and y. Doping in the side wall. Okay. La, could you read this point? The third one for Z sensing is divided with classical planar visual resistor. The lattice are just one per cantilever and two passive resistors with same parameter and is located on the rigid body of the sensor. Okay, the third one, we don't we don't doping on the side walls, we doping on the top surface. So on the top surface we apply Z that we can bend this top surface piece of resistors to create Delta R. So this is the direction sensing. Okay, next page. Okay, X, Y, Z, the result. Displacement and uh, voltage output. So again, 20, 30, 40. So always, after the signal after the amplifier, the re output voltage is in the 20, 30 voltage range. So keep this in mind when you do your sensors. Next page. Okay, another one. So are we going to continue? Uh, what time is it? 3.51. Okay. Any questions so far?
Okay, yeah, yeah, zero course. Yeah. Okay, can you turn off the camera?